Geographic asked the world a harrowing question. Planet or plastic? There's so much plastic in our world today that there's nowhere else to hide it. In fact, at this current rate, by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in our oceans. So why is it that the plastic problem hasn't been solved yet? It's not like this problem just built up overnight. Today, I want to talk about the unintended consequences of the circular economy paradigm. I actually believe that the way we're thinking about how we should solve the plastic pollution problem is limiting the options that we can be exploring. So it's really important for us to point out that plastics are becoming less and less recyclable today. And here you have on the left a picture of the winners um, of all the top innovation, top inno most innovative packaging award. And you can see that the, the materials are extremely sophisticated. They just get more and more sandwiched with different kinds of layers and, 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 and plastics. And on the right, we have a picture of what the best recycling technology can turn that packaging into. It's a, it's a bale of mixed plastic with no market. And this is a serious problem because today, our recycling technologies are lagging behind packaging technologies by decades. So this serious problem is actually the, the result or has fueled this, this outcry cry or ban against plastics going on around the world. So this is kind of interesting. Here on, in the right, we have the states in the US that have banned single-use plastics. You can't bring the plastic to the bag, to, you can't bring, uh, get bags for free from the store anymore, you can't use you know, your disposable cutlery. But in black, we actually have the states that have banned the ban. Guys, it's a ban ban. <laughs> so, you know, the situation here actually is that in the states where the plastics have been banned, the cities have actually are seeing more plastic packaging than ever before. And this is largely due to the rise in e-commerce packaging use. So are we really here fighting plastics or are we fighting each other? Um, so this is, you know, plastic has been around for five, five decades now, and this is something that's confused more and more people, right? And this is because plastic is not just one simple material. Plastics are actually a class of highly technical and very complex materials. So what, I sh what I'm showing here are the number one through sevens. They're the conventional mainstream packaging plastics. Each number corresponds to a certain polymer. It, it means it's chemically unique. Where they're actually very different from each other, even though by naked eye they look very similar. So, the, the mess here that we have is, you know, you have the one through sevens, and then number seven is actually just another name for the miscellaneous, which means you can pretty much label anything that's not a mainstream plastic as a seven. <laughs> and with this type of system that has, you know, been around, it's extremely difficult for us to develop a solution. So it's important now for us to actually simplify the materials that we're using. Um, and one step forward to doing, to doing that is taking out PVC. We're finding real substitutes for that in packaging because PVC is actually even toxic to the human body and is found in a lot of things that children are contacting directly by mouth, so it shouldn't be there. And of course, we should be focused on using fewer and fewer types of plastic materials. But this is actually the direction that the industry chose to move against, or in, you know, the industry moved in the other direction, in that recently, in the, in the most recent years, we've introduced a new class of plastics called the compostables. Um, so if you've picked up a certified green cup, that plastic is most likely PLA. And PLA is actually only conditionally compostable. It, it means it only breaks down into soil or carbon dioxide if you're putting it into an industrial digester or compost, which most cities around the world can actually, can't even afford to install. And when PLA gets into a landfill, it stays in there for hundreds of years and behaves just like all the other plastics one through sevens. <laughs> so, with these other compostable plastics, and when we say compostable, we're, we can be referring to at least three materials, right? So for the other two kinds of compostables, PHA and PBS, they do actually compost on their own in a home compost when they touch wet soil, but they're not very industrial available today. 
So we have this issue here where we're making this problem more and more complicated. And uh, at this point, you know, it seems like banning plastics and trying to replace them is not doing the trick. So what about recycling? Well, what is recycling? Recycling should mean, you know, converting waste into reusable materials. But our, our understanding of recycling today is highly limited in that we think recycling should mean turning waste into the same material that it used to be. So for example, turning steel back into steel, turning cardboard back into cardboard, or turning PET plastic, that, the ones that make the clear water bottles, um, back into PET. Um, and it's exactly because of this limiting idea of recycling that we're stuck with not being able to come up with more solutions. So here's what the, the leading thought leaders have built for us in terms of a direction forward. Um, what we have here is showing that all materials in our world are divided into biological and technical cycles. And that these two cycles, um, it seems like, you know, they're, they're, it's like the Red Sea is between them. That, that they're very different from each other, right? And then this is a more, you know, complex and, and fuller, fuller uh, version of that same model. But again, there's no overlap between the biological and the technical cycles. It's like as if when a molecule is claimed from nature and used to make a man-made material, that all of a sudden that molecule can never ever go back into a biological cycle or back into nature again. And so this is what I'm calling the circular economy paradigm, is that we're turning these you know, oil compounds into things like plastics, and we have to keep cycling them over and over again into each other. And but this, but this is extremely problematic because when it comes to plastics, most plastics don't fit into the common framework of this type of recycling. It works for metals in that metals can be melted and, and remade into metal. But when we have plastics, uh, most plastics cannot be recycled in this type of fashion. So today, 91% of plastics that we're producing globally needs to be recycled. 91% of it is not getting recycled. And we've limited ourselves to these four major approaches. And we've been doing, make, doing re remakes of these over the decades. And mechanical recycling is shredding plastic up and melting them back together again. Like I said, this works for metal. It doesn't work for plastics. Um, even the most recyclable plastic, like PET, can only, at max, um, go through six of these cycles before it completely deteriorates and is, is useless for anybody trying to use it. Um, and then we have these plastic to, to, to fuel technologies, which are producing fuels that are so inconsistent and hard to predict that it's impossible to use the type of oil to make petrochemicals. So as a result, the only application for it is to burn it for fuel. And just like you know, plastic to energy, these two types of technologies ultimately take the carbons that are trapped in the plastics and send them up into the atmosphere as emissions. So this type of technology, I'm not saying that these technologies don't make any sense. I'm saying they're not enough. And if you live in an isolated island where it costs you a lot of money to ship fuel in from abroad, it might make a lot of sense for you to have a plastic to fuel technology as long as you make sure it's clean. But if you're burning plastic just so you can get rid of it, well, that is a really, really dirty way of generating energy. And this last type of technologies is really where I think the potential lies for our future. Chemical recycling. But the issue today with chemical recycling is that because we are limiting ourselves in our understanding or interpretation of recycling, chemical recycling is not applicable um, for most mainstream plastics. Um, today, chemical recycling means turning a plastic back into a monomer that would build itself again. So for example, PET plastic, actually you can do that with it. It's a type of polyester. And you can actually turn PET into the two chemical base units, PTA and ethylene glycol, and rebuild PET again. But that is actually the only plastic that we use every day that can go through this process. It is scientifically not possible to turn polyethylene into ethylene gas, and only ethylene gas, in a selective way that makes economical sense. So if we're interpreting recycling in this narrow way, we're not going to be able to tap into chemical recycling. Um, so what are all the ways that we can take the carbons trapped in plastics and give them a chance to go back into our economy? And I think the start of that answer is not limiting those carbons to be in this technical cycle. So my team has actually invented an example of one of these solutions. 
And adopting this type of mindset, the way that we see it is, you know, polyethylene plastic is our starting material. And what polyethylene is, is that that's the plastic that makes your garbage bags, um, is the plastic that makes pretty much any kind of flexible packaging you use. It also makes rigid packaging like your shampoo bottles. It's the most produced plastic in the world. Um, but really what it is, is just this really long chain of carbons, a single you know, bond carbons. It's extremely chemically stable, so you need to activate, usually, if you're using this kind of you know, previously mentioned thermochemical technology, you need to heat it up to almost over 1,000 degrees Celsius for you to be able to destabilize that structure. So it's, it's extremely hard to make anything that's worth more than the cost of going through that process. But we have actually developed a new way of a new chemistry where we're using catalysts to cut the polymer chain. And we treat this polymer chain as our starting material where we're cutting these, these carbons down and selectively making chemicals out of it. So uh, this here is uh, a picture. You know, if you want more information, there's, there's more on our website. Um, but essentially how it works is you know, we're taking city trash, plastic sorted from city trash, and this is through a demonstration we're doing right now with the city of San Jose. And we can selectively turn them into only specific species of chemicals. These chemicals themselves also are not only biodegradable directly, but they, are, they serve as drop-in replacements or precursors for materials that we already demand. And this is the part where you know, it's interesting to think about bridging the technical and biological cycles. Because the chemicals that we, we make for the first time can be applied to not only make the same nylon that would go into a steering wheel without changing any manufacturing process, but it can also feed into processes like fermentation to act as a biochemical feedstock for things like synthetic biology um, and the production of new materials that are compostable around us. The answer or path to these sustainable aspirations are really very connected to each other when it comes to plastics. But we must allow us ourselves to have a fuller understanding of recycling. Thank you.